it can't be. Oh, but it is. Another vintage Technic stereo receiver. I'm not, uh, there is a method to my madness here. I'm not looking to own every piece of equipment they ever made. My interests are actually very specific. But basically what I am looking to do is to obtain a collection that represents a good sampling of some of the more unique models in each class that they produced. And this definitely qualifies. I became interested in one of these after watching some of uh, YouTube user V West Life's videos where he used his Technics SA946, I believe that's right, receiver to abuse and uh, torment various speakers, oftentimes to the point of destruction, which has kind of caused me to rethink my attitude that, you know, these hybrids are weak need. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. The number of them that I've seen blown up tends to suggest that there is some weakness to the design. People suggest that shorting your speaker wires tends to do them in. But his receiver seems to keep right on going without fail, despite abusing all kinds of cheap speakers, and sometimes even pushing them to the point of failure. This receiver was dirt cheap because it has a little problem. It plays just fine, it looks nice, it's in relatively good condition, although there is a boo-boo over here that has to be fixed, and it's exemplified right now. It's normally not that visible, but it's exemplified because I've got the screws out of the case in preparation to fix the problem. The problem that it's got is you turn it on and really nothing lights up. You know, it comes out of protection, the power indicator and stereoplex display, stereoplex being a kind of fake surround sound. It all starts up, but there's nothing going on over in the station display and not all the indicators in the source selector work. For example, there's tape one monitor. This thing has no less than three tape monitors on it and I cannot imagine why, but it does. Anyway, not all the indicators on the front work the way they should, and I've been in there far enough to confirm that those are due to bad solder, just like the equalizer had. But the station display never lights up. Now, it does tune stations. It was listed as being able to do that. But you can't see it. Why can't you see it? Because this is one of those liquid crystal displays with a colored filter and a backlight in it, and the backlight bulb has given it up. If I shine the light just the right way on there, you can see numbers. But I can do better than that. All right, there's a hole in the top of that assembly. Let's try this. There you go. You can just kind of faintly make out the numbers. And it definitely works. But the little backlight bulb is burned out. Well, that's no big deal, because just like my SA929 that I replaced the, uh, plastic, the plastic lens light in that lights up the front panel, it's just a 194 automotive bulb, nothing to it. it. Cost me 89 cents and I bought the receiver itself for a song because of the problems that it's got. But it plays beautifully, has a rated output power of 70 watts per channel. It is hybrid based, just like all the others. You can just barely see the hybrid in there. I suspect that it's a Sanyo part, but it actually says Technics New Class A on it as opposed to having a Sanyo part number. I suspect it's just badge engineered though. They were ordering enough of them and so they could get it to say what they wanted it to. There are a lot of circuit boards in here. This thing claims to support, uh, claims to feature the new computer drive system. And over here on the end is the tuner board. I'm not sure what that is, but I think this is the computer drive board. But there is no computer drive monitor featured on the front panel just because there's really no place to put it. But what makes this receiver so special, and the reason why I wanted one after seeing V Westlife's demonstration of his, this thing is able to play TV audio. Now granted that's analog TV audio, and of course analog TV is obsolete now that we've been through the digital switchover and fiasco, and nobody can watch TV anymore. But, if you have an RF modulator or something along those lines that still modulates to the uh, NTSC standard, and there are stereo modulators available, you could play your TV audio into this thing. At first I thought that this might really be, this supports broadcast TV and cable TV, and at first I thought that the point behind this might be so that, you know, if you had a regular but a nice TV, and it didn't have stereo audio, you could simply leave the playback of the audio up to your stereo system, you know, turn the sound down on the TV and let the stereo play. But this thing's TV tuner is actually quite limited. 
it only covers the VHF channels on broadcast TV. You can see it wraps around there, channel 13 to channel 2. And on cable TV, I haven't yet figured out how to tune this, but it says it only tunes channels 2, 3, and 4, so I don't know if it's supposed to take input from a cable box or how that's supposed to work. But as you can see, this thing has front panel inputs for video and audio from a VCR. It has a VCR equalization mode on it. You know, you can turn that on and it turns on the VCR sound EQ icon. So I really have a lot of learning to do about how this thing's features can be used. But I thought the idea of a TV tuning receiver was pretty cool. It's not as cool as I thought it would be because it doesn't cover the UHF band at all. All it happens to cover, of course, is VHF, and that's kind of a bummer, but, you know, it's still kind of a neat feature to have in a stereo receiver. And I may try to hook up, I have a stereo RF modulator for television, so I might, uh, I might try to hook that up and demonstrate with it. Of course, over here is the Stereoplex display, and this doubles as a power output indicator. The Stereoplex is supposed to be some kind of a stereo expander. It's a circuit that tries to make stereo audio sound like your speakers are actually sitting further apart than they are. And so when you turn it on, it goes from saying power to saying Stereoplex. And yes, that is a vacuum fluorescent display. I'm not sure what the filled-in indicators mean, but when you turn Stereoplex off, it goes back to a power indication. And of course, right now I have no speakers hooked up. And so the power indicator really doesn't behave properly, and it's probably not a nice thing to do to ask the uh, power amplifier to drive an infinite resistance load. But it is a pretty nice looking set. You have your tone controls over here, your input selectors, um, MTS audio decoding for television audio. It supports monophonic, stereo, and second audio program, which was sometimes used by TV stations for alternative language broadcasts or something like that. But what I really want to do, I really want to get that display working properly. So let me find that 194 bulb in my soldering iron, and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. I'll break that little bulb out of its socket, clip the wires that are going to it, solder the new bulb into place, and then everything should be good to go once again. And of course, it's pretty much the same deal as with the SA929 that I did earlier. Just slide this little rubber thing back after wiggling it out of the metal housing that it lives in which is actually vented, which is a nice touch. Probably helps the bulb live a little longer. Anyway, there's the old burned out bulb. So just cut that off as close as I can. Got a lot more wiring to work with in this receiver at least, which is nice. But yeah, I just have to cut it off at those two points right there. And then I prepare the new bulb right here by bending down its wire leads, stripping this off, soldering them into place, Fastening this thing back up again, making sure the leads don't short, putting it in there, turning it on, and testing it. Should be pretty straightforward. Alright, now there's the new bulb in place, but we're not quite done yet. Because as with the first time I showed you how to do this, if you get a fingerprint on the bulb, your skin oils will get hot and they'll leach through the glass and they'll make a hole in it and ruin your bulb. So you'll have to do this all over again. So what you need to do before you call it quits and say that everything's done, you need to scrub the bulb thoroughly, taking care not to touch it, with high percentage medicinal or isopropyl alcohol to make sure that all the skin oils and foreign materials are off of it. Then you can put it back into place and test it out. Okay, let's give it a try now and see what happens with that new bulb in place. Oh wow, it looks nice. Got a nice cool blue color to it. Matches the power indicator display. I think I'm going to need to get some speakers and some source material. I'm told it plays, but I haven't tried it myself. This thing's definitely suffering from some dirty controls and things like that, but it's nothing that a good cleaning won't fix. Anyway, what I have here is a Radio Shack stereo modulator that needs to be fed a garbage video signal to cause it to turn on. And then I have the... that's coming off of a cheap DVD player. And then I have the two audio outputs from the CD player underneath here. And then of course the tuner is listening to channel 4 and when I queue up the CD it'll start it'll start to play through the TV tuner. The MTS station monitor down here is indicating stereo reception so that's definitely working. Let's just see what happens here. And while this is playing I'm also going to demonstrate the stereoplex effect.
When the sun wakes up in the west, stereo flex off, on. When they ordain thy little off. hair, and she becomes a free. And of course, when it's not used for stereo flex indication, it shows you the power output as it's perceived to be. When the lights go on at Wrigley Field, I'll be coming on to you. But there you have it.